everybody welcome to fab fit friday i am sorry it is already four after i was fussing around um and i thought i had all this time and then i looked at the time and i was like ah! so i apologize for the late start today um i'm excited because i am on my mission to finish projects that i made in may or actually earlier than may um and also, I snuck in a project. I am wearing my bright blue crossover Cardi. Hi, Judy. Welcome. Hi, EA. I feel like I should know your name, EA. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, my, my memory is for remembering people's names is very bad, so don't take it personally. Um, all right, so I'm really excited because... I finally decided to finish my linen shirt jacket that I made um, in April and instead of doing the buttonholes on the sewing machine like the traditional buttonhole, I decided I would embroider them. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you some of the benefits of using your embroidery machine to embroider buttonholes and actually if you have an embroidery machine and you haven't used it because embroidery wasn't as big of a thing for you as maybe you thought it was when you purchased your embroidery machine, this is a great gateway project into wanting to embroider. I'm gonna show you how to add some detail to the buttonholes and then the buttonhole design that I created, I'm also gonna show you how to use it for something other than a buttonhole. So I am going to get started here. I'm just realizing now that I made a little template to use to place my buttonhole and now it's missing. So of course that would be what would happen. Hold on, let me just look here quick for it. Well, if you saw how big this, if you saw how big my template was, I don't think you'd be surprised that I actually lost it. Um, hi, Kathy. Welcome. Oh, your my volume is low. Uh, there is that better. Ednora, welcome. Actually, I don't know if I have thousands of viewers, but that's very nice of you to say. Um, okay, so Kathy, can you hear me better? I put mine up to a full 100%. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is, let me just show you the buttonhole and then you'll see why it's so easy for me to lose it. Let me switch my view here. Hi, Pat, welcome. Oh, that's as, my volume is as loud as I can get it. Let me just move my, is that better if I move my um, mic closer? Let me, let me shut off my fan. Maybe that'll make it better. All right, I'm shutting off my fan, and my volume is as loud as I can make it. I hope you can hear me. Um... All right, so, yay, Mary, Mary is here. So happy you're here live, Mary. All right, so let's get started. First, if you guys follow me on my, um, my Facebook page, I was working on a mystery project, and it is this crossover Cardi. So let me just stand up. I'm wearing a sports skirt, see? Woo! Um, because I'm going to go hiking later. But basically... This cardi can be worn three ways. You can tie it, you can crisscross it. I haven't put the buttons on yet, but you can, if you button it around, it becomes 
like a crossover cardi this way, or you can just leave it open. So it's a really versatile pattern. And I used soft um, cotton gauze to finish the edges of this one. And this is gonna be a class that I'm gonna be teaching in July. And it's also part of the Cool Stitches J Stern Designs um, boxes. So those are the two places that you're gonna be able to access this pattern. I think after I teach the class in July, I will release it as a pattern to sell in general. But for now, I um, that's how you can get those two patterns. My friend Debbie actually offered a $10 off coupon if you wanted to try her um, Cool Stitches subscription boxes. Um, you can get $10 off your first one. And then under here, I just want to show you this tank top. I just threw this on quickly so I could wear this. This is a tank top that I rubbed off during my rub off class and I haven't finished the neckline yet, so it's a little fussy. So I'm just trying not to flash anybody. All right, so now that I've gotten um, through the description of my blue cardi here, I'm gonna switch my view. Oh, and Nora says, I love the color and pattern. Um, this is actually a, it's sort of a burnout knit, and I call it burnout because the color actually is, is rubbed off um, in places to make it pretty sheer, so that's why I needed to wear a tank top underneath it. Um, all right, so let me switch my view here. Okay, so this you can see is my, um, my shirt jacket that I had worked on in April. So this isn't like a me made May. This is more of a, I did this in April and now I'm doing the buttonholes. So what I wanna show you here is, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Hi Diane, welcome. Let me just get this nice and crisp. Okay, so what I decided to do here is, I decided to embroider a buttonhole and then embroider some satin dots underneath it. So the actual design is this long. Okay, so it includes one buttonhole and these dots. So the dots continue and you can see as we go down, I just um, embroidered them end to end to end. And, and to place this, I'm gonna show you how to place this, um, but unfortunately I lost my little scrap um, you always want to test your embroidery. So before I stitch this out on my shirt, there's the one on the neckband. I thought that was kind of cool. So obviously when I'm wearing the shirt, you know, you won't really see the dots, but I know they're under there. So I did the top, the top one like that, and then I've got them running down the placket. And I'm going to show you an easy way to position your um, buttonholes here. And then I'm gonna actually stitch one out on the cuff. And again, I think that will be fun to have the buttonhole and then have just a few dots running down, you know, partway down the cuff. I think that'll be kind of cool. So I digitized this in my, um, I have the Foff, digitizing program. I have like the whole, the whole big software program. So basically what I did was I created a motif line and then I selected a buttonhole from the built-in um, stitches and then I selected the satin dot and I made a longer line. So this line is actually, um, if you put the whole thing together, it's four inches because I wanted my buttonholes to be separated four inches apart. So um, I made the dot dotted line to take up the rest of the space between the top of the buttonhole and where the next buttonhole will go. Okay, so that's how I got this design. And it's really kind of a fun design because it can also be used decoratively, and I'll show you that in a minute too. So before I start working on this, I just want to show you. Here is my hoop, and you'll notice here you don't just embroider one in a hoop, and really it's much easier if you use a bigger hoop and then hoop multiple times 
um, you'll save stabilizer and you'll um, have an easier time embroidering if you use a larger hoop when you're doing small designs. All right, let me just stop and say hi to people. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Um, Pat says the dots are so fun. Love a detail like that. Thank you, Pat. Um, hi, Janie and Judy. Welcome. Hi, Diane Bacon. Welcome. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to embroider a sample. It only takes a minute to embroider because, like I said, I lost my template. So you need a template to position your designs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scrap of my linen. And actually, I don't need to use the linen per se because I already know it works, but I just want to... Oh, here, I found it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take a piece of this linen, a little piece, I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to stitch the design out, and that way I will have a, um, a sample to work with. Now, you'll see here that I've put, this is wash away um, stabilizer, and you can see I patched it, and see how well it's stuck on? Like I can barely rip it off. The way I got that to stick on was I just used my light misted water spray to spray the stabilizer in the hoop and then I put a second layer over it so I'm not using giant pieces to keep rehooping. Oh, Mary wants to know if I've picked out buttons yet. I have not picked out buttons, but I did do like a 5 8 inch buttonhole, so I know I'm going to use like a, a small shirt button for this and I'm, I haven't picked that out yet. But basically, what I want to do here is, let me see if I can swing this around so you can see. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. I'm going to move my dress form out of the way. I'm going to bring my embroidery machine around here. Like in a place where I can show it to you. Okay, let's see. I think I'll be, oh, a minute. I really love the stand that I got to go with this because it makes it very easy to um, swing my camera around and my machine around. All right. So I'm just going to stick that there, and then I'm going to see if I can switch it around so you can see. Here's what we're going to do. There's my, um, there's my machine. And basically, I am just going to, um, I'm going to see if I can just, I'm just seeing if I can rotate this around. Let me see if I can do it. Rotate it 90. Oh. Yeah, I can't do that that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, see if I can do it on this little strip right here. Sorry. I'm going to try to stick it right there. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. So this red dot that you can see here, that's the center of the design. So I'm going to move it right into the center here. And I'm just going to put this right here. And the whole goal here is just to stitch out. So first we're going to baste in the hoop. Now we're going to embroider the design. saying maybe some vintage mother of pearl buttons and a watercolor hue would be pretty. 
that would be pretty. Um, all right, so I'm just going to stitch out this design and then I'm going to show you how to use it. sample right there, but that's okay. All right. Let's move this over here for a second. Okay. All right. So now I have a sample, you can see. Okay. And notice how I embroidered on that little strip of stabilizer. If your stabilizer is hooped very firmly in the hoop, you can really get away with, um, you know, using little strips and getting a lot of use out of your one hooping. I'm gonna take this off now though, and we're gonna start fresh so I can show you. But basically, this is what I was looking for um, before I started embroidering a new one. This is my template to place my designs. So first I want to show you how to do that and then I'm going to show you how to hoop it. All right. So I'm not going to do another one on the placket, but I just want to show you if I were going to do another one on the placket, how I would organize it or position it on the um, placket. So here is this is the end of my button placket right here. Okay, and I think you can see, let me just change the, I wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing. So the last dot is right here. Okay, you can see where the, um, the embroidery is. So the first thing I did was I used chalk and my ruler. use this ruler to measure um, half an inch from the edge of the button placket. So I'm just going to use my ruler to draw a chalk line. And I only drew these lines as I went, like I didn't go all the way down because the chalk fluffed off easily and I couldn't see. But basically, See that white line right there? And then I would use the template like this to position it along that line. And this dark dot right here is the center. Let me just see if I can get this really sharp so you can see. All right, so this little dark dot da um, mark is the center. So basically, if I have this laying on my chalk line, then I can use, use it as a template to mark the center of my next design like this. So basically, when I hooped this, I would put that red dot that I showed you on my machine right in that crosshair, and that's how I would know that the buttonhole would end up in the right spot and it would stitch out properly along this um, edge. So instead of doing it here, because I really don't want to embroider any farther down, the last dot's here. There's my hem. I think that's close enough. So let's do a cuff, and I'm going to do it the exact same way. So, and I think to just to make it easy, I'm going to turn my cuff inside out so I can work with it like this. Oh, wait a minute. I just want to make sure I put the buttonhole on the right side of the cuff. Hold on. All right, so let me just make this a little bit bigger now here. Okay, so the, the cuff closes like this. 
Okay, so I'm going to want my button to be like about, I don't know, a scant quarter of an inch from the edge of the cuff right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make myself, first I'm going to mark that just so I have it. And again, I'm going to use my chalk. Oops, not, oh. All right, so that's, that's where the buttonhole is going to start, right on that white line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of my cuff. My cuff is it's almost two inches. So I'm going to mark a line that is like one inch from the edge of the cuff like this. So you can see now I have a guideline to put my um, template, and then if I lay it right here, so I'm going to lay it so the actual but the actual end of the buttonhole is just on that white line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center dot here. like that, and I'm going to mark my crosshair. So now that's where I'm going to put the center or that red dot when I put it on the machine. Now I'm going to show you how to get this cuff in the hoop so it's going to embroider straight along my cuff. That's going to be the next step. And like I said, I'm going to start with fresh stabilizer. And one of the best tools that came with my brother PRS 100 is this hoop um, screwdriver. It's specifically designed to loosen and tighten my screw right here. So I'm just going to lefty loosen it maybe 15 minutes of a turn here because it was, it was really tight. Um, I really like my stabilizer to be like tight like a drum. All right, so then I'm just going to fold a piece in half so I can have a double layer. That's going to be my next step. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it so it's just big enough. Stabilizer is expensive, so I try to economize and only use what I need. And I'm working with my 5x7 hoop. That's a little bit bright. Let's make it a little less. There we go. So I'm going to hoop this now, and I want to make sure that the stabilizer is squeezed between the hoop on all four sides. So you can see already that, see how tight that is? All right, so I had um, loosened it a quarter turn, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to tighten it righty-tighty that quarter turn back. Okay, so now I know this stabilizer is going to be really firm and it's going to be really nice to work with. So my next step is I am going to line my hoop up with the grid on my cutting mat. So I can see the lines on my cutting mat through the stabilizer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to make a line following the line on the, the grid so I know that the line I'm drawing is, you know, square in the hoop. So my next step is I'm going to take my cuff, and this is where I'm going to turn it inside out. I think I'll be able to get to it easier if it's turned inside out. Let's get the one that I... marked. I'm going to turn it inside out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it in my hoop so that the edge... Good morning, Andrea. Oh, thank you. Andrea says cute top even better than the photo on Facebook. Thank you so much, Andrea. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to hoop my cuff so that the edge of the cuff 
is even with that line that I drew. And I'm gonna start by pinning the cuff to my stabilizer on one end. And again, the important thing is I wanna make sure the edge of the cuff is exactly even with that pencil line I drew. Okay, so then once I get one side done, I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side. And the only thing here is you obviously want to pin somewhere where you're definitely not going to be stitching because you don't want the needle to hit the, um, the pin. So now I've got this set up so that I can um, embroider. And I'm just going to redraw my chalk line here, it's a little faint on this end. I just wanna make sure you can see it when I go back to the machine. So the white line is gonna be the center of the design, okay? And the pencil line is how I got it square in the hoop. All right, so it really doesn't matter where I put it in this hoop, I'm not trying to center um, my fabric in the hoop. I remember in the old days when we first got embroidery machines, the whole deal was getting that design in the center of the hoop so you can embroider. Well, guess what? Doesn't need to be in the center. All right, so I've got it all set. I'm gonna go back to the machine now and I'm gonna show you how to um, embroider this. Buttonhole is gonna be right here and then it's gonna stitch some dots along the cuff. All right, so let me see if I can get this set back up over here. All right, let me just swing my camera around. Ooh. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here, as you can see, I think you can see if I brighten this up here, my buttonhole is facing the wrong way. I want my buttonhole, oops. I want the buttonhole to be on the left side. Right now it's on the right side. See, so the buttonhole is right here right now. So I'm gonna go push return and I'm gonna mirror image it. Oh, I have to get it in the center first. Then I'm gonna mirror image it. All right, and then this is my basting right here. I'm going to delete that because it's obviously not with the design anymore. Okay. Then I'm going to go to embroider and I'm going to add the basting back on. So now my basting is matching the design. Now I'm going to put the hoop on the machine and I'll show you what's going to happen next here. Sorry, this is going to be a little bit crooked, but I think you'll get the idea. Okay. All right, so my next step is I need to get my design centered on the line. So I'm going to move it first like this big. Then I, once I get it close, I can use my arrows to get it right where I want it. So I, I don't know if you can see, there's a little red dot right here. That's in the center of my crosshair, so I think we're gonna be good. Now I'm holding all of my shirt in my lap. You don't wanna let that hang and drag on the hoop. So I'm gonna press go and it's going to base in the hoop now and that's how we're gonna be able to tell if the design is positioned properly. Basting in the hoop holds all the layers together, plus it also shows you where your design's gonna be, and it kinda of gives you a second chance if you didn't position it properly. Oh, I think 
my tail. Let me see my bobbin thread. I'm just checking my bobbin thread. It might be that it's too short. The tail is too short to get picked up. going to back up. Oops. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so here's here's what I'm noticing right now. I want my buttonhole to be just a little bit closer there. So I am just going to, I'm just nudging. Oops. I just nudged the design over to the left just a little bit more. Then I'm gonna skip the base and the hoop color, and we're going to embroider the buttonhole now. Let's go back over to the table. Boop. Okay, so I'm sorry about jiggling my um, camera around here. All right, so are there some things I wanna talk about um, in addition to just doing the embroidery? So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's gonna make a cool detail. Now to get this out of the hoop, I'm gonna go on the wrong side. I'm just gonna use my sharp embroidery scissors here. And I like to clip that little knot in the basting and then I pick the basting stitches out. They come out really easily. You know, and then I'm going to clip all the threads between my dots. I'll do that later in the back, but I just want to show you clean up the back. Then from the front, you know, you clean that up. Then I'm simply going to take my pins out. And then to get this out of the hoop, I'm going to fold this towards me like this. Let me just make it a little less bright. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm just going to trim really close to the edges to make as small of a hole in my stabilizer as possible because I want to use it again. But, you know, don't sacrifice safety, meaning don't cut your get so close that you're risking cutting your fabric. Um, so see, there's the hole in my stabilizer. So some things I wanna talk about here. I chose a, um, a rayon 
embroidery thread for my bobbin thread. So after I throw this in the wash and I, um, you know, get rid of the stabilizer, this will wash right out. I don't have to cut it or pick at it. Um, it'll look like a nice embroidery on the wrong side of my shirt as well as the right side. So if I'm wearing this cuffed up, it'll show and it won't look yucky. Okay, and then if I'm wearing my shirt open and I'm not buttoning it, which I probably, I've been wearing it without buttoning it all along now. I've worn it, I've worn this shirt several times, but you can see this will make a pretty embroidery on the inside of the button placket as well. So that's one of the reasons why I like to, you know, embroider my buttons. Just remember, don't use plain bobbin thread if it's a kind of shirt that you're going to wear open sometimes because you'll see it. If I was always going to button this up, I probably would have just used, you know, white or pink thread to match, but I wanted to make it look as pretty on the outside as it is on the inside. Now, another place that I'm going to put this design is I thought it would be fun to put this design right here. So I'll have um, a buttonhole at the top of my side vents at my side seam. And then I think I will actually just sew a button there like it's a pretend buttonhole. So I'll have a little button detail on my side seams as well as having it on the cuff and the neck band and down the placket. So I'm really excited about this. It's almost finished. You know, I know that all of you don't have embroidery machines, so I'm not going to um, do any more embroidery today. I just wanted to show you. Um... Oh, Mary asked a question that I was going to mention before, um, that I was going to mention. You always want to check where the button lays at your fullest part of your chest. Okay, so she's asking if I'm checking to see if the buttonhole is going to be at my widest or fullest part of my bust. And the answer to that question for this shirt is I did not because it's such a loose, it's a shirt jacket. I have so much ease that it doesn't strain or pull anywhere. Although I will tell you that that's going to be pretty close to the fullest part of my bust. So actually, let's try it on and see. But I'm just, I'm really in love with this shirt. <laughs> and look at, it's not black. And I have a blue thing now, so I'm really starting to, um, you know, my colors. All right, let me just put this on so I can show you. All right, so if I were to, oh, and the other thing is, I pr like I said, I'm probably not going to button it very often. But if I were going to, you can see, all right, so this button is actually about not at my fullest, but as you can see, there's so much ease, it's, it's really not going to matter. So that stays closed without even having a button there. So you can see, you know, it's just, it's a loose, whoops, a loose shirt jacket. But Mary did bring up a good point. If I were making this on a fitted shirt, I probably, my fullest part is right here. So I probably would have made this an inch lower. But you can see that if it stays closed, you know, without any buttons, it'll be okay in this case. But thank you for asking me that, Mary. I was thinking about that when I was starting up at the top. Um, the other thing I may do is see how there's no, oops. So the buttonhole is right here and then from the buttonhole to the, to the um, neck band there is no dots. I may actually stitch dots right here. So I may actually do that as well. But um, you know, I'm super excited. I have one more buttonhole to do on my other cuff. I'm gonna put those two buttonholes are those two designs on the bottom of my side seam so I can put a pretend button at the top of the vents at the side seam. And then I think I'm going to call it a day with this shirt. But I really, I really, um, I'm really excited. I love this. So that's my little mini tutorial on 
how to embroider a buttonhole, how to position it in the hoop. Um, <laughs> Diane says I'm spreading my colorful wings. I can flap them too, see? Yes, I'm, I'm really um, going to be branching out my colors. Um, so I bought some more fabric. I want to show you. I didn't get it at Fabric Mart though. I got it at a local store, but let me just show you some more colors I got. Oh, Mary says she always, I always have to check blouse to check which side the buttonholes go on. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. So I put my buttonholes on the left. So I'm gonna be lapping my shirt left over right. Um, but I just wanna show you here. I got, all right, so admittedly one of these fabrics is, um, actually two of the fabrics I got are Jennifer Comfort colors. Okay, so I got these fabrics at um, a local fabric store, and this tank top that I'm wearing is my rub off. Oh, Diane's asking me which um, linen I used. This linen I got at Banksville Fabric in Connecticut. Banksville Fabric is in Norwalk, Connecticut, and it's probably you feel like you're in New York City when you're in this fabric store. It's got wonderful fabrics um, without the long drive from Connecticut to New York City. Um, so this is a cross-woven white red linen. I know when we were doing the shirt jacket class we talked about how Fabric Mart had some cross-dyed linens. Um, so this, you know, and here's the thing. I made, remember the green one I made earlier? My first test shirt jacket? I think that was like a linen cotton blend, not half as nice as this. So if you'd like to make yourself um, like a, a linen shirt jacket or overshirt, look for Irish linen or cross dyed 100% linen um, because it really does feel nice, it wears nice, um, and I haven't ironed it and it's, it looks a little rumpled but it's not ridiculously wrinkled. So there's that. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, Judy says such good ideas. Yay. Yay, Judy. Are you going to do embroidery, Judy? Um, all right. And then, so this tank top I'm wearing, this is, like I said, this is a rub off that I did during my rub off class. I'm going to use this pattern to make a tank top um, out of this striped fabric. And if you look close at this striped fabric, it's really kind of cool because it, it's got a lot of stretch in this direction. It's super stretchy. Um, and it has holes in it like, um, see, let me see if I can show you here. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, let me make it crisp. See, there's holes, almost like um, they were hem stitched. So, see the holes? So I'm kind of excited to make a tank top out of this gray and blue. Now, admittedly, this is a Jennifer Comfort color. This is not, you know, spreading my wings color. But this is, <laughs> look at this red. I'm going to, this is a red rayon chalet. I'm going to use this for the skirt part of a new Anna dress when I teach my Anna dress class for Stitches at Home next weekend. So actually, speaking of next weekend, let me just look here. Let me just look at my schedule for a second. Okay, we do have Fab Fit Friday next week because Stitches in June is Saturday, Sunday. So I will not be teaching Friday. So we will have Fab Fit Friday next week. Um, but then on Saturday and Sunday, I'm teaching my Anna dress class. And this soft rayon, I'm gonna use this for the skirt part of my Anna dress. And I may cut it on the bias, so it's going on the diagonal, the, the stripes are. So it's a very soft rayon jersey, red. And then, 
I'm going to pair it with a black knit top. And then I got another, this is a, this fabric feels and looks a lot like that elephant print that I got to make a skirt last week. It's kind of a crepe ITY knit. I'm going to make my daughter Anna another Anna dress out of this. And then I just got some very boring slub. See how, see the slubs? Blue. I'm going to make another one of those um, cardigans out of a darker blue. Um, so those are the things. And I know that this is not an exciting out-of-the-box color. This is for Anna, so it really doesn't count. All right, so those are the other fabrics I got. And let me see, what else do I want to tell you guys? Um, well, let me just see. Judy is saying, um, I will plan on doing embroidery for buttonholes. We'll have to explore what I want to do. All right, if you need help with that, Judy, just, you know, reach out and I can help you. Um, because you can find a lot of, uh, embroidered buttonholes online. You can also do them yourself if you have software. You can combine them with mini little stitching like I did with the dots down the front of my, my shirt here. Um, you know, and it's subtle. This is subtle. But you can be really out loud with this as well. So, you know, if you want it to pop, pick a color that um, contrasts your fabric. And if you want it to blend, like I did, put pick a color that's you know, matches the fabric. So those are my reports for today. Um, I'm going to be teaching, tomorrow I'm teaching a, you know, a short program for the ASG and I'm going to be doing how to make my knit, how to make a non-stretch pattern for stretch fabric. So I'm going to be teaching that tomorrow and then I'm having a sew along for the Frenchie jeans for people who took the Frenchie jeans class with Fabric Mart early in, in May. So those are the things I'm doing this weekend. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, if anybody has questions about doing buttonholes, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you're in my J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider group, you can ask questions there. You can post pictures there. Um, or if you are not on Facebook, you can email them to me. My email is at the bottom of every video that I upload. All right, Pat asked a question. Oh wait, Judy, oh I already said Judy. Pat says, I have not gotten your shirt jacket pattern yet. Oh. All right, you guys, my car is at the shop. Can I just see if this is them? I'm so sorry, because I'm carless. Hello? Hi. It's all set? Oh. All right, well, how, what's the total? I'll just bring you some cash. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Bye. Yay, my car is fixed. I needed brakes. So I went to the printer yesterday, and um, I went to the printer yesterday because one of the guys that works there no, maintains his own car, so he came out and he looked at my brakes, and he thought I needed calipers and rotors and brake pads. So I went to Napa, and I bought all that stuff, and I brought it to our local guy down the street, and he actually told me I didn't need a caliper, so I'm super excited I can return the caliper. But anyway, I'm sorry about that. It was a little bit um, <laughs> off subject. But what I was starting to say, oh, I was starting to talk about what Pat asked me. Pat asked me about the shirt jacket. All right, so the cover of the pattern is my dad wearing the shirt jacket, and the sleeve, um, he thought the sleeve should be a little bit longer. So if I stand up and show you here, you can see the sleeve is pretty long, but I did add, I spread it and added about an inch to make it so the cuff hit me mid-hand. So I would, I would probably slash the pattern on the length and shorten line and, and add a little bit um, if you want really long 
you know, extra long sleeves. Because if you don't want extra long sleeves, it'll probably be fine. My husband liked the sleeve length the way it was. My dad wanted it a little bit longer, and I made mine a little bit longer. Oh, Andrea's going to be with me at the ASG tomorrow. Yay, Andrea! Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, please let me know if, if you have embroidery questions and you do embroidery, you know, post comments and questions because if I know there's, you know, interest in it, I can do more during FabFit Friday. And also, I, if you have specific questions about embroidery, um, I really want to get my Embroidery Sundays going again. But I struggle to find topics when I'm, I'm left to my own devices because every embroidery thing I have is a huge thing. So it's hard for me to just pick an embroidery idea and just do it. So if you have embroidery questions, post those below. And I can either do those as an embroidery Sunday or we can do more embroidery on FabFit Friday depending on, you know, if people are interested in that. So anyway, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be continuing to work on my pool between classes. It doesn't look like mud anymore. I've got the water balanced. I just need to keep vacuuming, vacuuming the bottom. So anyway, that's my report on my pool. And um, I hope you guys have good weather this weekend. Enjoy. And I will see you next week for FabFit Friday. And if you join me for Fit Tip Tuesday too, um, yay. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing that for that yet. But thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you again very, very soon.